You're about to listen to Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games. It's a comedy video game podcast. We would like to stress that the hosts are not experts and are really just very crass commentators. Seriously, this is an explicit podcast that happens to talk about video games sometimes. So please enjoy this pretty okay podcast with Tyler and Dave. Hello, Internet, and welcome to our second take at an intro for this podcast. <laughs> yep. The first one's lost the time. I deleted it. That's oh, Man, no one's going to know it. No one. No not, one ever. Not even a Patreon exclusive. Man. Although if you pay us $50, we'll record something. We'll re-record yeah. that as best we remember. <laughs> we'll re-record take one <laughs> with all the horrible shit that we said. <laughs> oh, man, it was awful. Oh, God. We're lucky you lost it. We're very lucky. <laughs> Uh, welcome to a uh, uh, show where uh, two old guys uh, play old games. You're welcome. Come on, come on, have a sit down. You missed some good Full Metal Alchemist talk. We don't, oh, we don't have to do it again. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's force it. It'll be great. Force Everyone, it. Yeah. Force it. How much better I think Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is over the one that we saw on Adult Swim. Is that because of all the filler and non canon stuff in the original time? Pre- pretty much. Oh, man. It's like we haven't had this conversation before at all. Because there's. The the biggest discrepancy is there is a homunculus that lives pretty we, much throughout the entire series. We in don't the, call in the them OG. That. We don't call them that hum, anymore. Hum, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hermunculi. <laughs> <laughs> that he uh, <laughs> a, a homunculus that yeah. lives almost you know pretty much through the series we saw and is the very first homunculus to die in Brotherhood. Looking, so shit has changed up dramatically. Looking for an alchemical beast to play video games with. No homunculus. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Must bring your original body with you in case of trouble. <laughs> so, but of course, uh, the randomizer, we were like chilling out with the randomizer. Like, hey, there's been some good shit, you know, some bad shit. Like, what are you going to give us? He's and like, how's it going? He's like, you know what? Hey, you hey, know what? How's the show? It's a- I don't listen. I just give you orders. There are, uh, you know, like hundreds of, uh, you know, platformers and like shit that looks interesting on the list. But you know what? There are only a small handful of military games. I'm going to give them all to you up front. So here you go. Front load it. <laughs> With, uh, what, Bob? Is it Bob Kitchen? Gary. Gary, Gary Kitchen. Kitchen. It's the. So, first of all, I think it's really important that we say that Master Cycle Baron Kevin Link is here with us today. I was getting to that. <laughs> I figured uh, another military themed game. I might uh, come in and give you some uh, good stories. I happen to know a guy who actually was a tanker, so I got was a it Gary Kitchen? Right. <laughs> no, I, that was what, that was really funny. Whenever you guys mentioned that, I had to look it up. I was like, is this guy like in the military? Did a, did he actually make a game? No, he's just a game developer. Just a game yeah. developer, and like, no offense to Gary Kitchen, but like. Like I was reading through the games that he's done, and it's like I don't understand why he put his name on this. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's kind of you know, it's like yeah. oh, Donkey Kong Atari twenty six hundred port. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I remember people being like. Gary crazy Kitchen's about. Donkey Kong twenty six hundred, right? But it's one of those, it's one of those like David Crane things where it's like, hey man, we worked for fucking Atari and we never got credit on any of the things we ever did. So, mm. well, goddamn, goddamn guarantee we're gonna no, put God, it. Goddamn, goddamn, <laughs> goddamn. It's like I tried, goddamn. I tried to blaspheme him. God himself <laughs> stopped me. <laughs> the randomizer is like, no, you're gonna, Whoa, you're gonna on. put these letters in random order when you say them. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we're doing a Gary Kitchen Super Battle Tank. Two. Kind of. All right. So here's the secret that was going to spring on you. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, the randomizer chose for us Gary Kitchen's Super Battle Tank colon War in the Gulf. Uh, the game that I thought the randomizer gave us was Super Battle Tank 2. Oh. <laughs> so the good news is they're very similar games. <laughs> and Link has played Gary Kitchen's. And we did not. I wonder when I played it, I was like, where's the Gary Kitchen part? Oh, well. (laughs) (laughs) So, look, the way it was listed on my uh, my SD2 SNES was Gary Kitchen's. I don't know if that's true or not. I just want to say it. (laughs) I'm at the point where I lie about things so that people don't get get mad mad So we're just basically going to have just Link carry this whole episode. No, man. (laughs) Look, the games are so similar. It's like one of those, like... 
Madden. We're not going to play all the Madden games. Are we going to do a twofer? Yeah, we could, let's, okay, do a let's do a twofer. twofer then. Like, seriously, i got Flopsy over here. I'm looking at Flopsy, and like these games look very, very, very similar. All right, sounds good to me. The randomizer tried to trick us, but instead we're stealing more of its life force. No, I was just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but you found its weakness. <laughs> oh, 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 randomizer can't predict stupidness. <laughs> uh, that's okay. You know what that means, though, that we're definitely getting fucked at the end of this episode. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah, my my little, my no-no hole is aching for a soccer game. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't. Don't. Well, before we get into any game talk, what I have here... What you got? We were so kindly invited via mail to the wedding of Joseph and Melanie. So Joy Webster and his wife oh, getting married. Drink Smith. Why didn't you just say Drink Smith? Drink Smith. Drink Smith oh, and, I like, and Miss Drink Smith. I like Drink Smith. I like how you said it. Drink Smith. <laughs> drink... Damn it. Drink Smith. Drink, dr- drink Smith. <laughs> no, it's Drink Smith. Drink Smith. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, I do. The eyes are so hard for me to beat the southern out of me. No, I love it. Embrace it. It's like, what's in this drink? Us. Not ice. Us. 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 This ice. This... Put, put my finger in this ice. <laughs> this ice smells like ice. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember buying pop ice, uh, pop, like in college. Pop, pop ice. Pop ice. And then the every time you... I would say it, my friend uh, AJ, who was from like Louisville, and and no, more north. So every time I would say, "Oh yeah, I've got Popeyes," he's like, "Chicken?" Right. I was like, "What?" That's what it sounds like. Quit being <laughs> stupid. Of course, I mean the icy, sugary treat in the freezer. Chicken? Popeyes? Chicken? No, I've got Popeyes. Shit, I was excited for biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. All I get is <laughs> frozen Kool Aid, kinda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, dr- dr- the drink Smiths. Are uh, are getting married February twenty second. Congratulations at the Cheetah Lounge. Hey. Yeah, All everybody's right. invited to attend. If you bring everything that you you know, food, drink, everything you need, a chair, bring your Popeyes. Uh, they're they're of course registered at shirts.tagpog.com. Like all so good go ahead. married couples do. Well, congratulations, guys. That's awesome. Uh, but yeah, so <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be a very tanky episode. Tanky, tanky. What do you? What's so tanky? What? So what does it mean? Like we're gonna protect the rest of our party from right? Each of each of us is gonna be a different tank from a different different game. Weird party we've got (laughs) a a weird unconventional three tank party. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's like my first D and D game that was three fighters. So well, look, that'll work though. You get enough (laughs) potions, you're fine. Well, before we go any further, we have a package over there. I we see, do. I see. We have a package. Guess who didn't forget to bring a package this time? Oh, good boy. Me. Me. Mm. Uh, and I'm, I want to open these in order. We have a shitload of packages. That's, which awesome. is, That's incredible. Which is awesome. I think Christmas had something we, to do with it. We have more packages than we have listens. It's true. <laughs> which is fine. This is good. This is good quality podcasting. <laughs> So this is a package that came, uh, it was really weird, dude, because like normally the packages will go to the P.O. box, but like this one rolled up on a moose and it was like, what the fuck is a moose doing at my house? And then I pulled the package off of it. It was like, it had like a package harness. You know how like St. Bernard's had that that keg? It had like a harness for like packages. A package moose, yeah. And I, so I took my, I took my pocket knife out of my pocket. And I was like, "Stay still, Pacus." And I, I rest. I rest. Pacus, Pacus. Rest, rest easy. Rest easy. I see your evolution went very well. And then I, I took my pocket knife and I cut the the harness loose, and I I held this package in my hand, this very heavy package, and I was like, "Ah, Canada Post. Damn, Canada Post. Damn, a gift from the north." And then, um, and then when I looked up, the moose wasn't there anymore. Oh yeah. And this, without a package, it can't exist in in, the, in America. It served its purpose, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I opened it up, and I was like, "Oh, this is a package from Sacrifall." Ah, Sacrifall. If you're sweet. on Discord, you know who Sacrifall is. If you listen to our episodes, where the episode where he and Zalnot put together a real life manga quiz, <laughs> yeah. that's that Sacrifall. We have uh, so here's the deal. Sacrifall like knew that I was collecting Super Nintendo games and was like, "You guys want a whole bunch of games?" 
<laughs> All right. And, and I was like, yes, but are you sure? Because like, <laughs> but he like went through that fucking Canadian list. Canadian games don't fit in American Super Nintendos. <laughs> <I don't. laughs> he went through that list and it was like, that's a lot of games. Are you sure? He's like, just collecting dust in my closet. So... Here's what we got. All and right. We get to fight each other over these. You're the one doing the heavy collecting. Yeah, but they're not just SNES games in here. Oh, uh, okay. There are... Um, wow, like, I see two gold cartridges right off the top. The Adventure Link, The Legend of Zelda. We've got mm. Mega Man. Oh. We got Jackal. Oh. We got Metroid. Damn, man. I know, right? Uh, let's see. Then we start. I don't know if there. I don't see any other Super Nin, or other Nintendo games in here. The Super Nintendo games. We he said this is insane. This is awesome. Act Razor, Breath of Fire. Damn. I know. <laughs> uh, the Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past, Final Fantasy II. Shit, man. And the the disclaimer on that was Final Fantasy II labels fucked up. Do you still want it? And it's like yeah, yeah. Man, of course that's not. That's of course. Why, why would I not? <laughs> Uh, a Super Game Boy with Kirby's Dreamland inside. Well, that's yours, of course. So, uh, Bucky O'Hare for the NES. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, Bucky O'Hare. Uh, let's see what else we got. So, we did an episode over Bucky O'Hare on another podcast. Yeah, we did for, for the, the love, love of, of Indy. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think it was a really good episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. We've also got a Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Genesis, which man, I'm not used to this. I'm not used to this label. It must have been like a Canadian repackaging or something. Damn, woo, yeah. Uh, we got Scooby Doo Mystery for the Sega Genesis, Cyborg Justice for the Genesis, oh. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Super Nintendo, weirdly enough. No, just kidding. Uh, Blaster Master for the NES, Mega Man 3 for the NES, Mega Man 4 for the NES. Like, this is an extraordinary package. Uh, Zero Tolerance for the Sega Genesis. Uh, Link's Awakening for the Game Boy. Damn. OG Link's Awakening or DX? I think that this is, uh, let's see. It looks like this is OG, but I think it's in French. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) Love it. If you want to, like, test your abilities, like, test your memory of the game then uh, why not play the French version? And look at the cartridge. Look at the color of that. It looks weird. Like Maybe it's the lighting in here, but it doesn't look great to me. It looks huh. like, I don't know, like an army brown. For a second, because I can't. <laughs> my, my eyes are not working correctly. <laughs> uh, Landstalker for the Sega Genesis. That's a game I've heard a lot of good Damn, things about. Damn, Sacrifall. Arrow the Acrobat for the Sega Genesis. <gasps> One step away from uh, Super Alpha Chicken. <laughs> um, we got... What looks like, what is this? Kirby's Dream Land 2 for the Game Boy and Pokemon, the one with Blastoise on it. Pokemon Blue. Pokemon Blue. That makes sense why the cartridge is blue. <laughs> uh, and then we got the uh, Super Nintendo mouse pad. Wow. Yep. So I'm going to start doing some, <laughs> when as soon as I get some free time, <laughs> uh, I'm going to start doing some Mario Paint Twitch streams. Real bad, because those are fucking fun to get Baja blasted (laughs) and just take requests. (laughs) So that is probably going to be a thing that happens. So that's that's it. If you can believe that the package, unbelievable. If you can believe that it ends, it it ends there. Sacrifice. Thank you, God. It's amazing. Shit, dude. This is fucking amazing. That's pretty impressive. If anybody else has any really good games they just want to give us, you're welcome to do it. <laughs> Feel free. What's our P.O. Box? <laughs> P.O. Box 2785, Badoo, Kentucky, 42002. Uh, Tadpog Studios, care of Nicole Nance. Thank you again, Sacrifall. We'll film the slap fight that ensues after this episode. <laughs> And release it for Patreon donors. Patreon.com slash Tadpog. Southern Dave slap fight. And then kiss. <laughs> Yeah, the rule is every time you you have to kiss the spot you slapped. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a lot of dick slapping. <laughs> oh, why'd you slap my dick again? Ouch! <laughs> like go for my face, and I just jump four feet up. <laughs> uh, I've also been playing a uh, game called Killer Queen Black. I don't know if you've heard of it. No. Uh, it is a game that has almost everything you hate in it, but not not. Oh. It doesn't include racing or soccer. <laughs> uh, it's an arcade style. But it's all about Moses' ex-husband. 
<laughs> Oddly enough. Turns out. It's weird. I was like, oh, I got to gotta check this out. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's an arcade style, like almost joust like game where it's like two teams of four compete against each other. Like each team has a, a queen and three workers, three other people play as the workers. Mm -hmm. And it's like, there are three roads to victory, like a military victory where like if the, if one team kills the other team's queen three times, they win. Uh, an economic victory where those three workers, there are berries on the maps and like the workers collect the berries and bring them back to the hive and put them in holes. And if they fill up their hive before the any other win condition is met, they win. And then there's also this giant snail that's in the middle of every map. And if one team uh, rides that snail all the way to the goal on the other side of the map, that team wins. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just absolute fucking madness, uh, and it's it plays a lot like Joust. Like that's how the arcade like <laughs> control awesome. feel it comes in. It's really cool. Yeah, uh, it's like I picked it up on Switch where they got like crossplay. So I'm trying to get like a game going because it's like it's one of those games where it's like if you get like three other people and get on voice comms and like just queue up. I feel like it's one of those mm. where it's like you just roll people. It's one of those games you don't play with Ben Caruth. All right. All right. <laughs> Why is that? Because he wins all those kind of games. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not kart racing. Oh, okay. That's true. <laughs> But you do ride a snail, so yeah, I guess so you're, you're he, probably that's right. his victory every that's time. Right. <laughs> Ben's on the snail again. <laughs> what's what's up, Link? Uh, not too much. Uh, I was talking with Dave earlier before we got on here. I'm um, getting ready to go back to school for film, so that's kind of like my big thing that's going oh, on yes. right now. That's awesome. Nice. I start class on uh, Monday, so a week from the time that we're recording this. Fuck yes! Make sure you tell everyone about the podcast. <laughs> oh, you know, 100%. I'm spamming that campus with nothing but Tadpog stickers and business cards. I'll send you stickers. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. yeah, yeah, that's a deal, man. This podcast is being begged to be turned into a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Ling, maybe you can make the Tadpog movie. Has that been pitched to you yet? <laughs> Uh, no, it hasn't, but man, I'd love to do it. <laughs> All right, it's in the works. Considered in the works. <laughs> I love it. So we'll have that and the Captain Ron Super Nintendo game, which I think you started on, Tyler. Is that right? No. Yeah, yeah I saw the prototype you worked on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, I have a gun. <laughs> uh, but before, in our first cut, I was saying that and I met both of you, both of the two of you, both of you in 2002. It's a good year. So we've, we've all been friends for 18 years. Just move the two one place up. <laughs> And here we are. True. Yeah. Yeah. Mix it up. And uh, in even though it's been 18 years, and Link, I've even lived with you. If somebody says like Kevin, I'm like, who's Kevin? Oh, oh, you mean Link? Link, the guy with the Hellion shield on his on his leg? Oh, that's no, that's Link. <laughs> even when your wife is like, oh, hey, where's Kevin? I'm like uh, McAllister? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's kind of weird, too, because uh, some people still call me Link, and then, uh, of course, my wife uh, and most of my family now refer to me as Kevin, and it is just kind of a weird thing to get used to, but I, I guess it's kind of like a timeline delineation as to where we met in my life and where I was, mm. but uh, I prefer Link, honestly. It's it's nice. always been a great type of thing, So and, and yeah, that Hylian shield just marks me. So. But you know what else marks you? Tanks. Tanks. <laughs> Tanks. 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 So, um, we have anything else we can go on? Link, do you have any intro stories? Anything, anything to go on in, go on about? Uh, so I saw that Dave had posted a funny picture to one of the Discord channels, uh, that involved, uh, masturbating with Icy Hot. Yeah. <laughs> you wanna, yeah. Yeah. So, I, so you did I, uh, that? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. So it brought me back to when I was in uh, basic training. And uh, in order to prove how manly we were, we all decided it was a brilliant idea one night to take uh, industrial strength, actually prescription strength, Icy Hot, and put it on our balls and see how long we could last yes. before we had to go wash it off. Yeah. Oh. I knew some guys in track who did that. Like, and it was like a real fun game for them. And I remember like getting changed one. Like, I remember the first time I witnessed it and they were like, you want some icy hot? I was like, no. Why? For your balls. What? <laughs> and then I got worried. <laughs> like, what are you? Because I'm a freshman in high school. What am I not doing right then that you need icy hot on your balls? <laughs> Is that for like you come in ladies too much and you need some icy hot to get them back in order? These guys fucked. I just, I want to go ahead and throw that out there. These guys <laughs> fucked. Fuck. 
each other <laughs> with Ozzy <Hunt. laughs> Yeah, no, so that just brought me back to basic training. Uh, basic training for me was in 2004, so uh, that just took me way back. Like, holy shit, that's pretty funny. <laughs> There's a random memory. So how does – how – how bad is it? How does it feel? Yeah, and how long did you Take last? Take us there. <laughs> well, so... Uh, is it the, still on your I balls guess, now? <laughs> no, thank God it's not. <laughs> but uh, uh, I guess so. the stuff you can buy at the store is like 2% of the active ingredient that causes it to be minty fresh, we'll say. And uh, the stuff that you get from the Troop Medical Clinic is actually 5%. All right. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more there. So uh, I lasted about two and a half minutes before I was like, fuck this. I need to go wash this off. <sighs> uh, but my buddy, the guy who got the, the win out of the room, he went for 10 minutes. What did he win? Uh, just bragging rights. <laughs> Everyone came in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right now, he's on a podcast somewhere bragging about having lasted 10 minutes. <laughs> Very true. That would not surprise me. <laughs> I never put I, I never put icy hot on my balls. I thought those guys were absolutely insane. It's like no, that sounds awful. <laughs> not yeah, it's definitely that. not something I recommend. Yeah, and it, but it wasn't prescription strength. I know that <laughs> this was sto- this is probably like store brand this is a dollar icy store. Hot, icy right? hot. <laughs> it's just a peppermint and some wax. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, yeah, it was a melted soft serve cone. Essentially. <laughs> well, what what game do we want to start with first? Honestly, I'm sure we could just lump them all into one. There's uh, virtually only a few differences. I mean, uh, from what I saw on Dave's stream, there's a few more weapon systems in part two, and the graphics look a little bit better, but otherwise gameplay is pretty much exactly the same. Mm, So bad. (laughs) No, no. I thought this was a pretty decent game. I I enjoyed it. I can see Uh, where it could have been a lot better with a few basic changes yeah it could have been here's what here was my takeaway from super battle tank 2 man what a valiant effort at making this game that absolutely needs to be in 3d (laughs) decent in 2d (laughs) Mm, okay because like i mean the whole like crux of the game is you are uh in super battle tank 2 you're controlling an uh m1a2 linked is that is that a thing Yep, and uh, in the first one, I believe you're in the M1 Abrams. Okay, uh, and it is like you're just you're in the cockpit, like that's the view, and uh, you drive the tank around, and you open the map, and you see where enemies are, and you go, and you blow them up. That's pretty much how it works, uh, and it is straight up like it kind of reminded me of, and maybe this might be why I had a favorable favorable opinion of this game. It reminded me of Super Strike Eagle but it was like way better than Super Strike Eagle because it's like a lot of the mechanics kind of work the same where it's like you get the mission, the game is separated into missions. I know in Super Battle Tank 2, there's 16 missions. Uh, You don't even have to pay attention to them really. Uh, And once you get out there, it's like, okay, when I started playing, I was like, this is like Super Strike Eagle, but you're in a tank and it's not, everything's not going at two frames per second. Hmm. Was, um... Okay, so Link, I don't know. I know nothing about military battle. So a tank. Is there a lot of like you drive it out into a field and it's tank on tank battle? Uh, with the more modern tanks and uh, from what I understand from just talking with my friend and his experience actually being uh, in charge of a tank in the military, uh, usually most of the more modern tanks are actually uh, doing combat while moving. So... That's the big thing, you know, where before in, in earlier tanks, like say World War II era tanks, like I don't know if you've ever seen Fury, but they would pretty much line up and then shoot each other and try and move and shoot. But the the new more modern systems with computerized targeting and stuff like that, you can actually move at full speed and still deliver rounds on target. So more of like what we're actually, what we're doing now is what this game is. Yeah, essentially, this was like uh, one of the, I guess, from my military standpoint, one of the last major tank battles occurred during the Gulf War, and we pretty much just smoked everybody from what we had. There was just no chance. We went in there and just destroyed. All right, all right, because I feel like this game is the down periscope of tank games in that, like, are we, are we Kelsey Grammer being punished? <laughs> so it's like, no, 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 we're going to give you a tank. 
Um, okay, here's like a double A battery. This is for your night vision. So it's very limited and takes up like it's real fast. So here you go. There's that. That sucks. Like uh, like everything in down Periscope. All your all the other tanks, they're much newer than yours. So you're a lot slower than everyone else. So here's here's that. All right. Now are you basing uh, this ba- on my gameplay? No. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm just curious because it's like I'm not sure the other tanks are actually faster than your tank. I might I might just be bad at this game. Oh, from everything that I, when I played and I saw, it was just like, they were darting in front of me very fast, and I'm just trying to turn and fucking keep up with them, and I, I can't fucking do it. Um, yeah, definitely, like, speed management is a big thing in here. You can definitely go too fast and just have them sweep yeah. all around you and everything like that. Uh, from watching Dave's playthrough and number two, looked like the enemy tanks were definitely running circles around him, and that yes. was because his, his speed was, like, way high. So if you lower your speed just a little bit, you kind of get into that sweet spot where you can actually keep up with the other tanks and you're putting uh, rounds on them pretty accurately. That makes sense because that's like, that's like uh, it took me a while to kind of like put it into terms of like because that's what I would do in like a dog fighting game. You know what I mean? Like speed management is super is super important. Like the biggest complaint I had about this game was it, control wise was that I felt like it wanted me to do three things at the same time constantly. Like and those three things were ma- f- figure out my speed, mm-hmm. which you control with X and Y. So it's like you press uh, you press Y to uh, slow down or go in reverse, and then you hold X to like put your foot on the accelerator essentially. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you had to do that while simultaneously steering the tank with the directional buttons and then using L and R to, I guess, turn your your turret. Mm. Uh, I don't even know. Your cannon. I don't know the words <laughs> for the thing. <laughs> no, you're right. Turret is definitely right. Uh, that was just luck. I'm glad. Uh, so it's like, but you constantly have to be aware of these three things, like, at all times. Because it's like you never want to be still. Because if you're still, you're just going to get lit up. Mm-hmm. Uh, you need to be careful of where you're driving the tank because there are minefields everywhere. Uh, also, you can slam into enemies, and that definitely hurts your tank too. Uh, and then you have to you know, control the turret so that you can shoot things because that's always the objective. The objective is just destroy the shit on the map. Mm-hmm. But like, all right, so your, so your heads of display, okay, uh, here's, here's a big screen yeah. that it's just black. We don't know what it does, but there's that. And then here is all your weapon systems, your damage bar, so your health meter in reverse, and then a a mini map that's like it's it's it's, it's something. It's a mini map, and uh, here's a very here's a very tiny window, just like a real tank. We're we're doing a real good simulation here, so yeah. really tiny window. Yeah. So f- for it makes playing a video game like really difficult. So here you go, and then of course we have to be realistic and put the two. Mounts here, so here's two blind spots, and here's two really small <laughs> side windows. Yep. Here you go. Go. Go, Kelsey Grammer. So, like, most of those things are, like, I mean, they're all true, <laughs> but I do want to, like, Gary Kitchen's Super Battle Tank colon War in the <laughs> Gulf came out in 1992. Mm. So, I mean, like, that's, like, really super early in the Super Nintendo's lifespan. And, like, I think that's really important to, like, but, but Super Battle up. Tank 1 for the NES was wide open. See, it, was, it, was, it was split yeah. in half. So HUD took up half the screen and then a wide open view of the rest. Wow, really? So then they just like fuck that shit up for number two. So do they just decide, let's go with like... Let's go super realistic. Realistic. So which is like, some things like, you don't have to be that realistic. Like you can't cut your thumb off in Cooking Mama. You don't have to be super <laughs> realistic. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> It would have been nice. See, I didn't know how I, I hadn't even seen anything for the NES version. Like, I think it would have been nice to have like a toggle, like an option where it's like, yeah, do you want like, yeah, quote simulation mode or do you want to like see everything? Yeah. See, I like yeah, I also, that would be nice. Yeah. I noticed also too in your early stream, I only caught about uh, the first 30, 45 minutes of it, but that when you pulled up the actual map, uh, it didn't seem like you were using your driving controls, which is definitely something you can do on that map. You can do it. I figured that out. Um, this was definitely one of those games where it's like, well, I didn't read the manual, and I didn't do it on purpose because it's like, this might be entertaining for me to like try to figure this game out. 
because <laughs> it looked really complicated, you know, from the outside. Like, and when I first started playing, I was like, this is really complicated. But I don't know, man. It, like, I felt like it was within an hour. It's like, okay, I kind of get what this game is mm-hmm. all about. And then at that point, it was just experimenting with the weapons. But yeah, like driving while having the map open is totally doable in the second one. Uh, I just didn't know you could do it at first. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Dave, do you hear that? <laughs> Yeah, uh, whoa. No, whoa, that's like a Doppler effect. Yeah. I it was like, I heard it, and then it. Vroom. I looked down, I was like, oh, there's Flopsy still out. Whoops. That's okay. That's okay. I've been referencing Flopsy. It's okay. It's all right. Hey, Flopsy, it's all right. I've already, look, I've, we've already gone over the pertinent information. Okay. <laughs> where it's like, yep, the first one came out in 1992, the second one came out in 1994. I feel like I love. I love the Ultimate Nintendo Guide to the SNES Library 1991 to 1998 by Pat Contry, but we pretty much, I mean, it's just like two Covered paragraphs. It. Yeah. Just two paragraphs on yeah. <laughs> like these games. So it's like we've already, I feel like, done more. It's first person <laughs> tank game. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, what, what uh, genre do they consider these games? Uh, action, comma, simulation. All right. Yeah, All right. That's kind of what I figured. That's pretty much right on course. But I think I, I agree with that. But I think it is I think it is heavier on the action side than it is the simulation side because it's like the map we were talking about, for instance. Like it's an eight by eight grid. And on this grid, you can see the locations of all the enemies. Uh, there are different symbols for like uh, whether the enemies are tanks or if they're helicopters or if they are, um, I guess, missile launchers. And uh, also the enemies all have like these poison factories. Uh, they just got to well, go and blow up. Simulation, <laughs> poison factories. <laughs> right. I mean, they essentially kind of look like the nuclear power plant in The Simpsons, but instead of like the symbol of an atom, they have a skull on them. <laughs> and purple smoke. <laughs> right. <laughs> Looks like a giant cauldron instead of a nuclear reactor. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's the Haiti summon from Final Fantasy VII. You have to go blow it up. <laughs> so, like on this map, it's like okay, that's cool and all, and then you can see like where the minefields are, and it's like okay, that's neat. Uh, but like where it starts to get less of a simulation game is it totally has the Pac-Man tunnel warp, where it's like, hey man, do you need to get far to the east side of the map, but you're all the way over on the west side? That's fine. Just drive west <laughs> until you're off the map, and you'll wind up on the east side. Mm. So it's like this whole like flat earth kind of thing. Where See, I would rather, yeah. if you go, on, uh, go off on the side of the map, it's like, oh, now you're in another country, and we don't have permission, and they just blow you up. I feel like that's <laughs> how most games would have handled it. <laughs> Because, like, I remember, like, in, like, um, Super Strike Eagle, like, if you flew off, it was just, like, they would give you a warning, and then, like, if you didn't get back in time, you blow up. Yeah. Like, Star Fox 64 (laughs) style or something. (laughs) Yeah, it's kind of one thing I noticed in the first one. Uh, It's not really a a great mini-map to show you where it drops off at either. At least on part two from yours, you could see where it was going to kind of warp you. Oh, is that right? In the first one, it was not so obvious? No, because it's like there's probably at least two more grid sectors, but then you'd all of a sudden be like, oh, look, I'm on the other side of the map. Ah, okay. The big problem I had with the map was, um, okay, so there's the biggest disconnect in this game for me. When I was in first-person view inside the tank looking out, even if I had the speed all the way up, it felt like I was going super slow and it's because (laughs) it's just desert, man. Like if, like if you're not engaging in an enemy, it's just flat desert. And it's like, you get no sense of how fast you're going. But then when you press B and open up the map, it's like, you just see your icon just like zooming towards (laughs) minefields. And it's like, (laughs) ah, shit. Cause that's what, whenever I, um, Zoom my research in the game. That was a, a common complaint. Like topography, no, nah, just 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 flat, just, just flat. flat everything. Every level, all the time, it's all just flat open area. Yeah, but guess what? We're gonna show it to you at dusk and at night. Man, <laughs> that fucking night mission is really fucking rough. Because it's like Tyler, you mentioned earlier, they give you like night vision. Because like the mission I ran, they gave you two. They called it scope, and they give you two of them. And it's like they literally they last like so short. Like you get night vision for like from like now to now. <laughs> and it's like outside of that, it's kind of like I'll just use the flash. Yeah, here you go. Here's a here's some night, uh, just a giant night scope, and it runs on the battery pack for the Sega Sega um, Game Gear. Here you go. It's perfect. There you are. Go ahead and plug that in the wall. <laughs> But like there were times where I was operating off of the flash of the of the the gun. 
where it's like you'd fire. And I mean, that's mm. kind of cool that you can do that, you know, fire the gun. And then when the mortar explodes, I don't know with the thing that shoots. That's, the, is that it? Really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can just refer to them as shells. Shells. Oh. All right. When the shells explode, which by the way, link in real life, do they look like the barrels that Donkey Kong throws? <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's another thing that I was saying. There's a, uh, you know, there's no way that you're gonna see a round actually come out of a tank unless you got like some kind of slow mo ability because it comes out fucking fast. Yeah, that makes sense. In the game, however, they totally look like a barrel that Donkey Kong throws. Uh, and in the night missions, when they explode, they give off this little bit of a flash, and you can try to see where the enemies are for like a split second. Also, one of those black screens that you mentioned. Uh, is like it gives a readout. So like if you are lucky enough to like have your crosshair on an enemy, it will tell you the distance that enemy is away. Oh. But like how rare is that? You know what I mean? Like you both have to be going at each other straight on in order for that to happen. <laughs> Give me plain tank chicken. Right. Mm. And then the other, the other black empty monitor. I could be wrong, but the only thing that I found that it was used for is to show you a sweet thermal view of when you fire a laser guided missile and it hits a target, you get like this gif of like, <laughs> it looks like predator vision. And then it's like, you see this missile and then it hits the thing and then it explodes. Cause I definitely wouldn't, you know, want more vision of the screen. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be. I don't, even think, I don't even think you get that in the first one. I don't even think there's uh <laughs> there's no night vision goggles either. As far as I know. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at the inside view of the tank from the the Abrams in uh, Gary Kitchen's Super Battle Tank One, and I do not see that second screen. So I don't see the mm. GIF screen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we figure you get enough screen to see your enemy. So here's a sweet just GIF screen. Here's that's a GIF. It. That's what for you. Enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Is it going to be a different? You need a GIF screen. I'm going to take this out. You're you fired, to- <laughs> Gary. <laughs> Does it does it show like funny gifts ever? Nah, just this one. <laughs> <laughs> just death and destruction. <laughs> there are uh Link in the in the first game, are there really weird action segments that show up at the end of a mission? Yeah, I okay. refer to those as kind of like boss battles. That's one thing I have in my note. They're really hard because at least in the first one on mission three, your tank just stops and the only thing you can do is pan the turret left and right, and then you have to fire on the spots where they are firing at you in order to get them. But it's this big, long line, and, of course, the turret moves slower than shit. Well, I'm man, I, I'm i kind of surprised because, I honestly, I figured that in Super Battle Tank 2, they were, like, scrambling because they're like, shit, this game is, like, just like the one we released two years ago. What do we do? <laughs> well, we add the GIF camera, of course. We got it in there. What else? We need more. And they're like, have you thought about maybe at the end of every mission – the game turns into a different genre, uh, like Operation Wolf or something like that. And it's like, what do you mean? Well, like jets fly down and you as a tank are firing at jets and then helicopters show up that drop bouncing boxes and you shoot those. It felt like one of those moments where it's like this game, Super Battle Tank 2 at least, felt like a dad game up until that segment where like the dad holds, hands the controller to the kid and's like, here you go. I don't enjoy this anymore, but you you will, and then you'll get through this segment, and you won't like the dad part, and you'll hand it back to me, and I'll, I'll carry on. Oh, uh, it's it's fosters good relationships with father and son. Perfect. It really could. It really could. Yeah. Gary Kitchen <laughs> all about bringing the family yeah. together. It's like where's the where's the, the family spend the most time? In the Gary. In Kitchen. the Gary. <laughs> <laughs> In the Gary. <laughs> Gary Kitchen's cooking mama to bring it back to cooking mama. <laughs> Just cutting off fingers left and right, like. <laughs> There's now a, you got the blood screen, so you see how many figures you lose. There's a thermal camera view of like <laughs> figures getting cut off. Yeah, I was about to say it's just blood spurting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you hurt mama. <laughs> spurt, 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 spurt. I wish that Gary Kitchen and David Crane had done a game together. So it could have been like the longest title of a game in history. <laughs> Gary Kitchen and David Crane present. <laughs> <laughs> super something 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 super cooking mama in the kitchen <laughs> this battle tank that fires blobs that are also friendly 
All right, that actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> what if you feed the blob uh, a camo jelly bean? A camo jelly bean turns, turns into, into a, a tank. tank. <laughs> <laughs> Someone call David Crane and Gary Kitchen. Get him on the get him on the line. Feed him an icy hot uh, jelly bean, and it's just it's over. <laughs> no. <laughs> no blob, don't put that on your they're tiny blobs. <laughs> turns into a set of screaming balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, I did. I thought that the I thought that those action segments were really, really weird. And like, but it was fun too because like the surprise was fun. The surprises in this game were just like, what the fuck is going on? It's like I'm so glad I went into it completely blind mm-hmm. because it's like on the second mission, man. They're like, okay, so you destroy all the things on the map, right? All the enemies are done, and then they're like, all of a sudden, this big like axis cross shows up on the map and is like. Go to the objective. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, I guess I'll go to the objective. And when you get to the objective, the screen goes black, and then you're playing a different game. <laughs> <laughs> and then once you shoot everything there, it goes back. You're back inside the tank, and I'm surrounded by bunkers that are just <laughs> firing. And it's like, what is go- what is happening? <laughs> so it's one of those where it's like, I don't know. I feel like you got to figure shit out. Yeah. Unless it's spelled, maybe it's spelled out for you in the in the manual. I don't know. Yeah. Which ne- never, never, never saw one. <laughs> no, no, I didn't see one either. Uh, I think that um, there is something that I need to say. Uh, I think that the new segment, right? The um, what Dave hates about this game. Mm-hmm. What I hate about this game is that it does not give you enough passwords. It's got a password save system. Ah. Uh. But it's like I tried looking them up because it's like, you know, I would die on like mission three or something. And it's like, fuck, I got to go. I got to start. I got to do mission one, two to get back to where I died. I get it. That's just how games were Mm -hmm. then. Right. But it's like, but wait, I can enter passwords. There's probably like a password for every mission. Right. Fucking wrong. No. (laughs) It's like there are three passwords in this game. They like give you one at five, ten and then whatever. (laughs) You think it's 15, but it's not. I think it's like 12. (laughs) And it's like, I don't know. So this was one of those games where it's like, I uh, kind of wish I was playing with save states. Because mm, yeah. it would be nice yeah. to just finish a mission, save state, and then like try to get through the game that yeah. way, you know? Link, have you beaten uh, either of these games? I'm curious. Because you, you have a history with one of them, right? Whenever I, I, I played the first one, War in the Gulf, and that was like a frequent rental for me. I did eventually beat it, but man, nice. it took for fucking ever. That's impressive. Um, I mean, it was, it was, I, I don't know. I really enjoyed this game as, as a younger person. And it's like you said, the whole dad thing kind of kicks in now. It's like, I like the tank part. Yeah. Uh, that, bull, <laughs> that bullshit at the end, you can just keep it. <laughs> <laughs> And I think, like, uh, I think some of the weapons are fun. And it's, like, because you have, like, phalanx missiles, I think they were called. And, like, they're really effective against, like, helicopters and stuff. Uh, you've got, like, a, a, a light gun. Uh, and then you've got the heavy the heavy gun that shoots the, the shells that look like Donkey Kong's barrel. Uh, there's the scope that we talked about that gives you night vision for, like, a blink. Uh, and then there's also a smoke screen that you can use, essentially, to, like, hide yourself from enemies' radar. When you say something about your own opinion that might not be popular, you smoke bomb. Smoke bomb. Ride your train. Ride your takeaway. <laughs> uh, and then the I guess the only other thing that I can think of is uh, you could launch you could have like a you could have, launch a cruise missile. I guess if you wanted to, I could never figure out why when I was supposed to do that. Was that the laser guided missile that you had? No, um, there was one that I think just straight up said cruise missile, and it's oh, like, really? yeah, <laughs> you would use it, and then it would go to a cutscene of like another vehicle launching a missile into the sky, and then it would cut the Dante from Devil May Cry <laughs> riding that missile from Devil May Cry too, surfboarding on it, yeah, him and Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> I still I have no idea what it did. Like there were missions where it's like I would there would be a US base on the map, right? And you could go mm-hmm. there and like refuel and re-equip and like get your hit points back and stuff like that. They'd repair your shit. But like the the vehicles with missile launchers, they would take that out. Like if they fired a missile, that thing was gone. So in vain, every time they'd fire a missile, I'd be like, I don't know, man, launch a cruise missile. <laughs> <laughs> and it wouldn't do anything. So I don't know. Hmm. I didn't do well at the dad part either. I didn't do good at the kid part. Didn't do good at the dad part. 
<laughs> that may be more on the game itself than you. I don't know, man. M- maybe. Maybe half and half. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll reach across the aisle on that one. But like, we've also, like, either of you ever heard of either of these games? Well, Link, Link, Link played it and beat it, the first I mean, one. Yeah, just, just oh. the first one. And that was, I that was pretty much, that was just due to it being a rental at one of the rental stores that my parents let me rent games at. It wasn't something that I saw in a magazine and I was like, oh, this looks cool. I got to have it. Someone in Twitch chat, I wish, God, I wish I could remember who it was. I'm sorry. Uh, but someone said that they were familiar with the game. And I was like, really? Did you own this? And they were like, no, I didn't own it. But like, neighbors did and it's like plural neighbors of this game because i had never heard of this game before in my life yeah. uh but to be fair it is also the kind of game that wouldn't i would not have been attracted to as a kid well i'd never seen or heard of of these games like period like i've been i used to go to the good movie hut every now and then growing yeah. up and like i've definitely never seen this no i don't think i ever saw it on a shelf anyway yeah. or if i did it was just kind of like like, you know, like when you think back, you're like, close your eyes and think about a memory. And it's like, you only remember certain things. Everything else are just like black voids, <laughs> you know? <laughs> maybe there's a maybe there's a block blockbuster in my memory vault where it's like, okay, I see the Rocketeer on there. And I see Super Mario World. <laughs> Joe and Mac. Yeah. And then there's this, just this black void <laughs> that's vaguely <laughs> tanky. <laughs> <laughs> there are three copies of Super Scope 6 that don't rent no, out to you the scope. No Super Scope. And that scope. game comes with the scope, so <laughs> those games just sit there. <laughs> that, you know what that was? That was an employee like, look at me, I got three scopes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. God, I'm so ready to do Super Scope. I am not. I don't if, have I a mean, Super if, Scope. Should we get a Super Scope? <laughs> I'm very excited to do Super Scope games. <laughs> I'm excited for that one too because that was like one of my major Christmas gifts that I got one year. Nice, I would, yeah, man. I would definitely come back for the Super Scope Six game if you'll have me. Hell nice, yeah, nice, nice, yeah. I read that there is a um, there was a Kotaku article that I missed like a long like few months ago that talks about um, a God. I wish I could remember the controller maker. I can't. I don't want to say one and be wrong, but someone's working on uh, an NES zapper that works on HD TVs, oh, but it only nice. works on original hardware. Like you've got to plug yeah, it yeah, into yeah. an NES and all that. Yeah, but it, yeah fine, good I'll, enough. <laughs> hell yes, I am all about that. That sounds great. Yeah, Man. I've actually uh, looked into that multiple times. Of like, there's a bunch of independent guys that are working on it too, trying to get everything right. And so far. From what I've gathered in just my readings, they do have a working prototype that does seem to function 100% of the time. If they want to send it to Tadpog for like testing and potential, I don't know. Potentially not get it back, then Then, yeah, we're happy to take that. (laughs) Send us a box of old games that everybody wants and a working prototype. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Here at Tadpog, we are choosing beggars. We need to change our Facebook bio to that. <laughs> need a working Super Scope prototype for uh, for an HGTV. Next. Zero money. <laughs> they don't make those. Next. Need it for free. <laughs> Waiting for free. I don't know. I'm not playing at church. Next. <laughs> it's for my, for, my, for my kid's Christmas. Don't ruin it for him. Come on. Well, do you guys, do you have any achievements? Are we at that point yet? Because we kind of talked about it. I feel like there's a lot more to go on. Is there anything else that we need to say about the game? I mean, really, there's not. It's just that's the pretty much we went over the gameplay and everything. It, it doesn't change per level. They just add more bad guys. Yeah, there are more U.S. bases, and there are a lot more bad guys. And Yay, the, infl- the inflation kind of difficulty. Wonderful. <laughs> the Super Battle Tank games. <laughs> Thank you, Gary Kitchen. Actually, you know what? I mean, I'm... St- I think that this was an okay Pretty game. Pretty okay. Yeah, I don't think this was a bad one. And it, honestly, it's like, I think it was okay plus. Like, it's not my kind of game. Okay. I don't think it's like a good game, but it's an okay C. plus game. It's a C. Well, you know, we don't like to grade games that way here it's on uh, Catbog. I'm bringing it back to the old school. I'll give it a three and a half out of five beards. <laughs> yeah, wow, that right. is old school. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. I'd say maybe three out of five beards. I, I think I think that's probably where I'd settle. Uh, I do have a couple achievements. Uh, I got a lot of chivos that came in from Twitch chat. Thank you very much, y'all. Here are uh, my favorites. 
Uh, the first one comes from Rhythm, Mas- Rhythm Master Paul Korn, who uh, you probably are hearing mm-hmm. regularly on the Patreon Piggy Palace episodes. Uh, his achievement is Tank Fast, Eat Ass. <laughs> 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 and in order to unlock Tank Fast, Eat Ass, finish a mission without ever slowing down. Shoo. Yeah, it's impossible. Yeah. It's impossible. <laughs> Especially like as like the missions go on, they put more and more minefields in there. And it's like, I swear, the last one I played was just like the entire map was like ringed in minefield. <laughs> it was like playing Minesweeper. It was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tr- real question. Uh-huh. Does anybody here actually know how to play Minesweeper? No. Because I do not. Nope. Oh, yeah, I totally do. All right. I figured if anybody (laughs) here did, it was probably Link because it's like. Yeah, so the basic way to do it is if you click, you get the numbers on the grid that tells you how many mines there are within the area. Then you basically pick a square to put a flag on. If you successfully flag all the mines, you win that level. See, Nikki has also tried to explain it to me, and I zoned out at the same time I did with you when you said numbers (laughs) and grid. (laughs) (laughs) But do the cards fall down like a pretty pattern like in solitaire? <laughs> <laughs> what is the winning screen look like in Minesweeper? You know, I don't remember. It's been such a long time. We'll have to do an episode on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We should shortest episode ever. We should really do an episode on Windows ninety five <laughs> games. Like ski free and like, in yeah, Windows ninety five Space Cadet, Finball, and yeah. I would love to watch you play Minesweeper on Twitch. Oh um, I'd have Nikki on. <laughs> Nikki is fucking rules at Minesweeper. Mm. Like I cannot tell you the number of times where I've like when we both had computers, which is like wow, that's a long time ago. We are definitely a one computer household now. <laughs> we don't play World of Warcraft together anymore. So, uh, man, I remember like going by her playing Minesweeper and just being like, Ugh! just loudly behind, like I'm walking by. Ugh! Gross! <laughs> you have the internet. <laughs> There's porn on that, you know. <laughs> I downloaded it's it. It's not 1998, and you don't have the internet, and your parents are home. Uh. <laughs> You're not on your aunt's computer at a, at Christmas, and she doesn't have any games. Man, but yeah, she crushes it. She's good. She's real good at fucking Minesweeper. Like, and then it's like, I'm exaggerating, because like... She plays like the fucking huge ass maps where it's like, how do you even know where to start? She's like, I don't know, you just start somewhere. <laughs> yeah, hope that you don't click a mine right away. Exactly. Which uh, have you ever seen Hurt Locker, Nikki? Yeah, it's pussy shit. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is, if we're ever in a situation where numbers and grids are involved, I'm calling Link or Nikki. Sweet, I'm there. One or the other's gonna get us out. Next achievement I've got comes in from DJ Chu. Uh, who uh, was new to the Twitch chat, said that they've been listening for a long time, though. So, DJ awesome. Chu, thanks for that. Uh, DJ Chu's achievement is, what's this? What's this? And in order to unlock, what's this? What's this? <laughs> Find the secret objective and die because it makes no sense. <laughs> the secret objective being where it transitions into a totally different genre of game. Uh, and the last achievement I have comes from Doc, uh, and that is, wait, this isn't Tank Girl. And in order to unlock, wait, this isn't Tank Girl. You need to start up a game of Super Battle Tank 2 and realize your mistake. I don't think Doc liked it much. Link, did you love Tank Girl? Uh, you know, I did love that. I've never seen it. That was my jam back in the day. Yeah. That was like one of those secret things that I caught on a movie channel. I was like, I'm not supposed to be watching this. <laughs> so, like, why not? Is there is there nudity in it? No, it's more like the the whole thing of the the chick not being a a general conformist, and you know she she's like a punk rocker. Oh, girls with opinions and freedom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course oh, you're not no, supposed don't to do be. that. Uh. <laughs> you're gonna start respecting them and like like letting them make decisions. <laughs> I remember when it was on, uh, man, it used to play on a cable channel all the time. I can't remember which channel it was, but it was one, there was something about the aesthetic of that movie that I just, I don't know, man. I just never, that movie was like, even when I remember what it was, like it came out and I remember in the nineties being like, 
this shit's too 90s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely violently 90s. Yeah, violently <laughs> 90s is the perfect description of like any part of that movie I've ever seen. Because I was watching uh, Orange is the New Black, and there was one, there was a character who I thought, like, I've seen her somewhere. Was it Tank Girl? <laughs> It turns out she was in Tank Girl. Like, <laughs> you would not think, because Melissa, Melissa saw it growing up. Like, her brother liked that movie. So I just wonder, like, who is that actress? What has she been in? Because she's a paranoid schizophrenic, pit blonde, like, bleach blonde pixie cut, giant glasses. And I looked at oh, that's Tank Girl. Oh, she looked a lot different. <laughs> Melissa was like, no, uh, oh, my God. <laughs> hmm. That's crazy. I have, I'll have to look that one up. Who, re, who remind me? This is a stupid question, okay? I didn't look up anything about Tank Girl. <laughs> Who played Tank Girl? Tank Girl in Orange is the New Black. <laughs> she played Tank Girl? Uh huh. Okay. Was Pamela Anderson not involved with Tank Girl? What did, like, no, you're thinking barbed wire. Ah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, where she's like dancing naked and getting yes. all wet in the intro. That is what yeah. I'm thinking of. Damn, yeah. well, there goes my whole Tommy Lee thing. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking barbed wire. Holy <laughs> shit. Talk about opening. Man, you know how I was talking about like the blockbuster shelf? Like you just filled in a black void with barbed wire, a VHS tape <laughs> of barbed wire. Sweet. Yeah, Josh wow. and I watched that on Showtime at midnight once. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Good, anything good in there? Anything Mr. Skin would know about? I mean, just like, I feel like just the intro where she's stripping. Otherwise, like she's just wearing a like stripping leather stripping? corset. I feel. I feel like it. Yeah, she's like stripping, and like there's rain and shit, and then they're in a post-apocalyptic, <laughs> post-apocalyptic future. Her and like uh, her two friends. One of them's blind, and he's able to get into areas that other people can't because he can't be. De- he can't be tracked by like the eye scans. They hey, all can have you see? Shit. No. All right, come on. All right, you're fine. I can't. Can't <laughs> ocular scan you anyway. <laughs> All right, well, I guess I got two movies to watch. <laughs> Barbed Wire and Tank Girl. Yep. Next week, we're going to be covering <laughs> Barbed Wire and Tank Girl. Sweet. Mm. That's all the achievements I have. Uh, do you guys have any? Uh, I've got two. All right, man. Uh, bat- my first one is Battle Tank Badass. Uh, complete a mission with no damage. That is a Battle Tank Badass. Is it possible? Uh, I did it on the first mission of the first game. All right, then yes. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> And then my other one is, if you can't stand the heat, get out of Gary's kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. And that is shoot down a helicopter with a laser missile. Yes, awesome. <laughs> Watch a GIF. <laughs> I've got one, and it's uh, light him up, up, up. And that is uh, you unlock light him up, up, up by uh, activating all the screens on your giant HUD. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I got some questions. Oh, yeah. I got some questions. Yeah. I need some answers. Sweet. Do you have some answers, Link? You know, I, I've had so far, so let's see if I can keep it on a roll. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm going to throw a curveball at you because I was prepared to talk about Super Battle Tank 2. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you think Super Battle Tank 2 is? How much do you think that bad boy is loose? Just a loose copy. Like if uh, you were to get a copy from uh, uh, a moose carrying a package and there's just one little tiny package on it you open it up and it's like a oh. loose copy on a moose a moosey um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes precisely how much do you think it would cost in u.s dollars the moose is i would have confused. to say i'll say uh nine fifty nine dollars and fifty cents from link okay what do you think tyler i will go with the lord's number seven dollars actual retail value of Super Battle Tank 2 loose for the Super Nintendo on average, according to PriceCharting.com, at the time of this recording, is $5.81. Is it worth it? I say no, but... I say yes, but... I um, say if you're totally into that kind of thing, for sure, five bucks, that's not bad. But then you throw shipping in and all that. Then, then it gets oh, into. Oh no, that's, uh, if you found it at a like flea five, market for five dollars, yeah, that's five bucks right. at a at a flea market. That's that's no shipping and handling. That your friend gave you a ride too, so you're not even out gas. Thanks for the ride, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> you jerk Gary off. It took you. He took you to a flea market. <laughs> a real date. <laughs> <laughs> what's our What's the Urban Dictionary for Gary's Kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Give a guy named Gary a hand job. He drives you to the flea market. <laughs> We haven't even talked about the fact that Gar- this is Gary with two R's. Have you- I've never seen that spelling of Gary before. 
All right. So on a side note, have you actually looked up his official like online website profile thing? No, I have not. What's that experience like? Oh, uh, it's very, very retro. Looks like it was made in the eighties in my opinion. So, but apparently according to his bio listed there, he is a expert witness in the matter of lawsuits involving video games and app development. Wow. I guess I kind of believe that, you know, because it's like, again, it's like, you don't get credited for like these games that you've worked on. And then now all of a sudden it's like, you know what? I'm going to become like the paladin for, uh, for game law. So I Googled Gary kitchen urban dictionary. Okay. And I get the following result. Nothing for Gary kitchen, but just kitchens. Kitchens is a word used to describe the nappy naps in the back of a female's head on the sitcom Martin he often uses this word to insult the character Pam. I don't remember that. I need a I need a bone up on Martin. Or Shanae would say, "Oh, girl, your kitchens need some work." Huh? <laughs> so there uh, you go. Interesting. Ne- next time I watch Martin, I'll know what they're talking about. <laughs> I'll know like, what Shanae is talking about. I thought it was like he needed to renovate his kitchen. I was like, "Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> small, but he's running the apartment." So. <laughs> yeah. Next time I'll look over at Nikki and be like, "I know, I know what Shanae is talking about." Do you? <laughs> Damn, Nikki! <laughs> Stop playing Minecraft and watch Martin with me. <laughs> watch these horribly dated characters. Yeah, Martin. Man, I remember loving, <laughs> loving Martin as a kid. Loving Martin, mm. and then like then being subjected to pretty much just watching Martin in a hospital, <laughs> and it was like, man. I could like dig on this for like a nostalgia trip, but wow, five hours of Martin, bold move, BET. Yeah, that makes me think maybe I shouldn't go watch back and watch Herman's Head. I don't oh know. no, there's no way that's good. I know, right? But the one that I really want to go back and watch, but don't at the same time is Dream On, that H- the old yeah, HBO yeah. show. Oh yeah, the one where it's like uh, I'd watch when mom and dad were asleep because I might see a titty. You might, you might, might see a titty. <laughs> might, yeah, it was never a guaranteed thing, but it could happen. It could happen, like Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> it's like, might see a titty. <laughs> what are the show did we just mention? Martin Dream On? Herman's Head. Herman's Head, thank you. You're welcome. Show notes. That was a Fox Jam, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. I remember watching it in the house I'm living in now in third grade on a tiny TV in the kitchen. <laughs> nice. They were like, man, that... That really big guy in Herman's head, like he he really likes girls. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Uh, what was that Pixar movie about moods or whatever? Was that a Pixar joint? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I obviously hadn't seen that movie because I don't know anything about it. But I remember when I saw the trailer, I was like, "They made Herman's head a cartoon." <laughs> <laughs> but Louis Black is in his anger, so that's pretty good. <laughs> Is that a good movie? Yeah. Yeah, I should check that yeah, one out. It is pretty it decent. Is it's worth yeah. a watch. All right, cool. Is it? I mean, I'm sure like Amy, five Amy Poehler's The Main Emotion oh, really? and okay. Mindy Kaling is Disgust. Oh, these are all people I like. Richard Kind is the imaginary friend. Okay, cool. Yeah. Appropriate for a five-year-old, I'm Have assuming. you seen the the Sack Lunch, the Sack Lunch Gang or whatever? Sack on Sack Lunch on Bunch? F- sack Lunch Bunch, thank yes. you. <laughs> yeah, John Mulaney's yeah. kid special. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you were, we can do an in-depth review if you want. I liked it, I liked it. I liked it, but I don't know, man. A lot of those like song bits, it's like, okay, I get the joke. I'm ready for a, dif- <laughs> I'm ready for a different joke. I don't want to listen to the whole song, uh, except for... Butter noodles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, some of them are, they're, they're really, they're all really good. They're all really good. But, like, there does become a point where it's like, all right, next joke, please. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to laugh when he was, I want noodles with a little bit of butter. It's like, oh, uh, well, <laughs> Kenna does ride that jam sometimes. Or if oh, I just yeah. put a little bit too much butter, she is thoroughly disgusted <laughs> and it will not eat. <laughs> My favorite bit in that. Not to spoil it too bad is like <laughs> when they do the in in memory of they like they, that bit is so fucking that is the best part of that show. Anyway, and, and Jake Gyllenhaal, I like Jake Gyllenhaal's yes. cameo. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it's Mr. Music or whatever. Yeah. yeah, it's great. It's great. Yeah, Dennis Dennis turned me on to that one because he's a huge John Mulaney God, fan. John Mulaney's the fucking best. I see you agree. You you guys yeah. are like you guys are. I don't. There's something about John Mulaney where he's like. I don't know. He's funny. See, I think John Mulaney, like, he may be my favorite comedian out there right now that is very actively producing 
comedy. Yeah. Like, Patton Oswalt is kind of taking a back seat. Like, Louis C.K. is, you know, in hiding still for the most part. So. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. He's making weird decisions out there. Yeah. <laughs> just to pop up randomly every now and then. I got an email from him saying, like, hey, I'm coming back on tour. If you don't want me to, unsubscribe from these emails. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> what about Dave Chappelle? I do I do like Dave Chappelle. His his recent stuff has been really good. I like that. Not I don't think it's John Mulaney shit makes me laugh harder. But wow. I did like I did like Dave Chappelle's stuff. I like John Mulaney okay. It's just I'm so the guy is just so he's just too he's just I don't know. He's just he's just too funny. He's just too charm you know what I mean? It's just like, come on already. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and like his story about the Clintons, and it's like, fuck you. <laughs> Be a real person. <laughs> anyway, if he's listening, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he was about to plug us. Now, now, it's, now it's done. Oh shit! Where did our? Where you did know our, what my favorite podcast <laughs> is? Where did a little our, show <laughs> called Dad Bog? Nope, just kidding. Fuck those guys. <laughs> Where'd all our Patreon money go? John Mulaney pulled out. <laughs> John Mulaney was giving us all that a month. Shit. He's actually grim. <laughs> I think, no, that's just, it's just the reason I don't like, I like John Mulaney, but the Gr- reason. Grim and Alex Pena. I also, <laughs> all together. Also, yeah. They did the fusion dance. The reason, it's just jealousy. That's why I don't love him. I like him. Don't love him. Cause mm. it's just like, come on, man. Yeah. You need everything. His graphic design works really good. He does all his it's logos. Probably better than mine. <laughs> I mean, look at the dude. <laughs> he probably beat Super Battle Take Two in his first Twitch stream. <laughs> what were we talking about? Oh yeah, Gary Kitchen. <laughs> uh, Tyler. Yes, Dave. I have had a lot of fun with you mm-hmm. and Master Cycle Baron Link. Hell yeah! Talking about. Gary Kitchen, Super Battle Tank colon, War in the Gulf, and Super Battle Tank 2. Before we close things out, I have a few questions for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you were to give either of these games, you get to choose a beard that sums up how you feel about it. What kind of beard would it be? Um, John Mulaney does not have a beard. I would give it the beard (laughs) of one of the Geico cavemen. Which one? Uh, Can you name one? um, The one they call like... His caveman name is Ugh. Because <laughs> is it really? I don't know. Oh I'm damn it, man! I was like, I really want you to know a name of one of the guy who came in. No, but they call him Ugh because his beard and his hair are so bushy; it almost entirely covers his line of sight. He has like a little window of vision. Uh huh. Yeah. So his 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 beard. All right, that makes sense. A beard with a blind spot. They call it. Yeah. There you go. Man, when you said bushy, I thought you were going to work in George Bush there somewhere. I got excited for a minute. <laughs> I guess I could have also given it the Byakugan, but from behind. <laughs> the Naruto. Yeah, The Naruto there you go. thing. All right. I remember that barely. Tyler. Yes, Dave. If you were to give this game a pair of glasses that sums up how you feel about it, what kind of glasses would you give it? Uh, a welding mask. Because of the limited view? Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm, a, I'm just going to... I'm going to go and just drag this dead horse over here a little bit and yeah. hit this with this bat for a while. Yeah. <laughs> go, go ahead and ask some more questions while I hit this horse with, horse with this bat. Is that John Mulaney wearing a welding yeah. mask? <laughs> welding the most beautiful statue the world's ever fucking seen? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It turns out it is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Big Mouth is also really good. <laughs> Big Mouth is really good. Yeah. Dennis turned me on to that, too. Yeah. Yeah. I have a few more questions. If you'll have them. Oh, of course. Would you guys like to take a quiz? Yeah. All right. Hell yeah. We got a quiz that came in from our very own Inquisitor? Quiz 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 minister? Quiz minister. Quiz minister. Ross Rachel Green. Link, we haven't disconnected. I'm just uh I'm just pulling the quiz up. <laughs> That's what I figured. I was like, oh look, a noise. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just gonna let Trunkate Silence do its magic here. <laughs> Still working on pulling that quiz up. Don't worry, boys. I'll just read from this journal I made for the Call of Cthulhu Piggy Palace game. Oh, I got it. I got it. Came up. You know who probably had it a lot faster? John Mulaney. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is entitled Games I Don't Think I Have Asked Questions About. <laughs> well, okay. So the title pretty much says it all. Of course, I could be wrong because a sensible person would have written down which games I have questioned you about, but then I am not that. You Brexited, man, so yeah, (laughs) yeah. 
Usual rules. We don't have to draw on Trump. I can't talk. It's fine. Go ahead. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> First question. This game is a ripoff of Puyo Puyo, but with a Nintendo mascot. Kirby's Avalanche. Yes. I'd say that's Kirby's Avalanche. Do you want to take a guess at what episode number that was? 26. 26. Locking it in. It is Kirby's Avalanche, episode 39. Mm. Next question. This game is a reskin of Doki Doki Panic. That is Super Mario Brothers 2. Nice. Uh, For some reason I went Literature Club, but that's a reskin of something. I know. DDLC has definitely occupied the new mind space of Doki Doki. Mm -hmm. Like, for real. Uh, I have no idea what episode number that would have been. 80. 80. All right, there you go. 80. It is 77, Super Mario Brothers 2. Good job. That horseshoe was really close. (laughs) That's what I was about to say. (laughs) Or the hand grenade, one or the other. Uh, Next question. This game sees you evolving to save the planet. Evo. Evo. What's the full name? Evolutionary. (laughs) Evolutionary force. Victory. (laughs) Offspring. I believe it's In Search of Eden. Ah. Uh, mm, I don't know what episode number it was. Um, it was the second studio and Dennis came on. It's the first time I ever met Dennis. Um, 96. 96. Logging it in. It is Evo, Search for Eden, 84. Come oh, on, we're looking pretty good at those horseshoes. Right. Next question. This tactical RPG was released by Enix and saw rebels fighting against an evil empress. Released by Enix, Rebels fighting against an evil empress. Is that like all of them? Because I was about to say, what Enix games? <laughs> what all Enix games know. have we done? Soul Blazer, we Illusion the, of Gaia, the Quintet games. Yeah. Shit, I have no idea. We didn't do Terra Enigma. We did not. Link, any ideas? What was the question again? It kind of cut out. This tactical RPG. Maybe we should focus on that too. This tactical RPG was released by Enix. Or Enix and saw rebels fighting against an evil empress. Is it Tactics Ogre? War of the White Queen or War of the Black Queen? War of the Black Queen, I think. Yeah, that's probably it, right? Think Tactics, that's what I Tactics was Ogre. Thinking. Tactics Ogre. All right. What episode number do you think it was? 88. 86. Ogre Battle, colon, the March of the Black Queen. Mm. We kind of got there. We got that. We kind of got there. That counts. Next question. This dope golf game contained a Nintendo mascot and was incredible, despite you fools thinking otherwise. Could only be Kirby's Dream Course. Yeah. And sorry, Ross, you're wrong. Hey, look, I'm willing, <laughs> I'm willing to give that game another shot. I'm willing to give it another shot. I mean, I mean, we I think we lost a fan because of that decision. So <laughs> what episode number do you think it was? 89. 92, Kirby's Dream Course. Next question. This game featured a Disney mascot who changes clothes to gain different abilities. That was a Mickey Mouse game, wasn't it? He changes clothes and gains different abilities? Yeah, I don't know. Because then he get different outfits like in the course of the game that would give him different powers? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. Kid Chameleon. You remember that famous Disney mascot, Kid Chameleon? (laughs) (laughs) Was it like Mickey and the Magical... Not Castle Illusion, but another one. Like Mickey and the Magical. I gotta be real with you. All those Mickey Mouse games are a big (laughs) fucking blur. Like even earlier today, I saw, um, it was last night, I was going through a lot of SNES games. And it's like, I got my budget. Here's my budget that I can spend on Super Nintendo games this month. And it's like they had a Mickey Mouse game. And I was like, oh yeah, it's that. Huh? Which one is it? Because like, <laughs> I recognize the label, but it's like, okay, he's like dressed up like Peter Pan. He's like tiptoeing across a checkerboard. It was Mickey's ultimate challenge. Oh, I bet the one where Minnie changes behind a curtain. Yeah, that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that one. Uh, I have no idea. You want to go with a Mickey Mouse game? Mickey Mouse. Castle of Illusion? <laughs> just Mickey Mouse? Uh, Mickey Mouse. All right. <laughs> just Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. What episode number do you think Mickey Mouse was? Uh, it was 96. 96, locking it in. It was 122, The Magical Quest, starring Mickey Mouse. That's what I was thinking, yeah. Well done, Tyler. Next question. This game is responsible for a regular host's title that he does not like. Burger Time. Burger Time. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Ross. Yeah. Thank you for that. (laughs) Burger Time. What episode number do you think it was? 146. 135 burger time. 
is it weird that I'm so proud that like we've been pretty close on the numbers? Like yeah, all of them. We've been like within a range of like, I don't know, 12, 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next question. This is the third in the series of Kunio Kun games for the NES. I think the only one that we have done is River City Ransom. Yeah, because it's Dodgeball, something else. Yeah, River City Ransom. Track Games, I think is like another one. River City Ransom, locking it in. What episode number do you think it so was? This is a bigger jump. Like 200 or something, right? Yeah, because I mean, I, I went to Blake's house in Oklahoma and played this. Um, right. 187. 187. It is 184. Ah. River City Ransom, starring Kudio Kud. <laughs> Next question. This game is a one on one fighting game where one hit can result in death. Bushido, Bushido Blade. Blade. What episode number do you think it was? 210. Two or maybe ten. it's two. You think it's 200? Did we do something different for 200? Don't know. I have no idea. 210. 210, Bushido Blade locking it in. 191, Bushido Mm. Blade. Last question. All right. This game features an orange feline mascot with a taste for fermented milk. Seven days of Garfield. All right. (laughs) Fermented milk? Cheese, right? Is there a Heathcliff game? (laughs) That's what lasagna is, right? Fermented Uh, milk? Fermented milk. Damn, Ross. All right. (laughs) I was a taste for renatized bacteria. (laughs) The last time I was in Gary's kitchen, I saw fermented milk and ate it like a lasagna. (laughs) Just spit the finger bones out. Man, I forgot about Seven Days of Garfield. (laughs) What episode number do you think that might have been? 210. Also, did we do a Heathcliff game? No. That's why I was like, is there a Heathcliff game? He would drink rancid rancid milk and eat fish bones. 233. Mm. Chester Cheetah colon too cool too fool. I feel like uh, this could go either way, though, right? Because what's the fermented milk? Cheese. What's in lasagna? Cheese. So, I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, I yeah. feel like that was put there on fucking purpose. Yeah. He's like, these idiots. These could American like, idiots. Cor- corn puffs may have been. <laughs> They're going to go Garfield. All right. Well, we lost one. Damn it, Ross. Thank you, Ross. Thank you very much. That was good. That was pretty awesome. Hmm. Oh, uh, well, yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty good. I feel like we zoomed through this. Yeah, yeah, pretty pretty quick. So you guys want to, like, I don't know, talk about our favorite porn stars for like an hour? Or? Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Link. <laughs> no? No takers? All right. <laughs> Fine, I'll go. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't want to make you guys. I don't make it. I don't want to make it weird for everybody. No, we need to have Casey on if you want to talk about that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's going to be a very weird conversation because it's like what I have discovered recently is I have had conversations with people and they have named mainstream porn stars and it is like who? Mm. No idea who you're talking about. I don't. None. I don't either. My my porn knowledge is now like three and a half years old. So I don't like. They're all. They're all gone now. <laughs> eh. They might not, they might be for username. What's that link? I just go by username now. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> link and I are in the same spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Link and I. I can tell you who I follow on Reddit. <laughs> like Gianna still working? Who? <laughs> Felicity Vaughn, she's still doing stuff. She's still making <laughs> Sophie D. That's about it. That's I think about the, it for me. I think those all died four probably, years ago. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> What do you want to do now? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I want to thank Master Cycle Baron for oh, uh, yeah. all the work that he's been doing on Tadpog Prom recently. Yeah, I did just post a new poll on Facebook Nation page today about activities for Friday. So if you could please just go there and click one of the options, that would be wonderful. I did forget to say, and I'm going to add it after I'm done here, but if you are bringing a plus one, just leave that in the comments. And we were talking about Thursday night being like a chill night where um, we just have food catered to the hotel and we hook up some Super Nintendos and NESs and just hang out and play some games. What what tournament are you wanting to run this year? I mean, you name it. We could run. There's so many different tournaments. I, I would love to like have like Killer Queen Black. You know, uh, I'd, lo- I'd love to like play some of that. Um, but as far as like Super Nintendo games go, p- probably like Battle Blaze. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Battle Blaze would be good. <laughs> Battle Blaze would be very good. Yeah, probably Battle Blaze. Uh, they, uh, Nate and Paul, they figured out the um, 
the weakness in Donkey Kong Jr. math, so I can't run that again. Uh, player one has a distinct advantage over player two. So once that was discovered, it's like, okay, no more Donkey Kong Jr. math tournament. Just both we be first player. It's easy. Just flip. Done and done. If just fist fight for first player. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just go for timed runs then. Right. Yeah, exactly. Or dress up as a monkey and we yell math questions at you. And whoever gets the Perfect. rust right in two minutes wins. <laughs> Well, you take some ass reddits. You down to do that, Link? Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely down for that. All right. We call this the reverse intro. Uh, so here's the question. How do you flirt? I don't. I never did. Never will. Yeah? Yeah. Link, how do you flirt? Uh, I guess my early style was to buy a gift and give it to them and hope that they would just reciprocate some type of affection because of that gift. Ah, uh, the hoonie pop m- method. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That, that was definitely me growing up. It was like, oh, I bought you this. Do you like me? <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, how do you flirt? Uh, just trying to make them laugh. Yeah. Yeah, that's, ba- that's basically all I can try to do. It's like, yeah, do, that's do more you, my style now. Do you like the Chris Farley body type? All right, well, then I better make you laugh. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm looking at their responses. Smile a lot and lots of eye contact. That can get really creepy really fast. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. What I've discovered is I people don't like when I <laughs> made, I maintain eye contact like constantly. I just like I don't know. It's just one of those things where it's like someone's talking. Look them in the eye. I'm giving them attention to what you're saying. Right. That, that's polite. Yeah. But I worry it's too much. Yeah. The other, <laughs> other man, like, is he trying to fight me? Yeah. It's like every now and then I have like a voice in my head is like, look away for like a second. Blink. <laughs> <laughs> Back away from this person. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. What are some good... Walking my dog up to them, who is super friendly and social, and then pull the dog off of them and engage in conversation. Boo! <laughs> I don't. I make them flirt the with me first. Off of them? <laughs> yeah, like a cute dog like, like rushes up dog... to a cute girl and be like, oh, come on, boy, get down. I know no, she's a like, cutie, how, but how, come on. How social is the dog? Is the dog humping the chick? Pull him <laughs> the, off? Just vicious, tearing into her. Yeah, get <laughs> her. Oh, God, you smell like good pussy, don't you? <laughs> come I'm on. sorry, ma'am. He, he's just, oh, he's all about your pussy. <laughs> come on, boy. Let's go home. She's not interested. Let's go masturbate to Gianna Michaels. <laughs> Here, can you rub this hat? On your on your vagina, so that I can distract him and take him home. <laughs> Don't worry, we're not going to track you later. <laughs> <laughs> not to be a bitch about it, God. It's, I'm a nice guy, just with a dog who loves pussy. He's a humping dog, not a tracking dog. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, God, I hate people who don't love animals. <laughs> <laughs> um. Whenever I'm texting, I add an extra letter. For example, hey, with two eyes. <laughs> Clearly, your lack of spelling says that I should love you. What's the, what's the username on that? I want to just see if we can discern whether that's a, a man or a woman. Contagious Nutella. There's no telling. Could be either way. <laughs> there, yep. There's no telling. <laughs> 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 All right, good night, everybody. <laughs> Tyler's the new John Mulaney. Let's get out of here. <laughs> One small black coffee. <laughs> Have you heard the tragedy of Darth Plagius the Wise? No, no one, no one's getting whatever that one. No, sorry. Yeah, Darth Plagueis the Wise. It's a Star Wars reference. <laughs> uh, I buy my wife pizza and hope that gets her in the mood. So if you want to flirt with Dave, smell like Pizza Hut. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's necessarily flirting, but I, yeah, I guess if you do want me to flirt with you, by that I mean I skip right through the flirt and go right to the embrace, smell like Pizza Hut. <laughs> Telepathically is the final answer. That's a good answer. I like that. Yeah. In, in a scenario in uh, when I'm taking a shower in the morning, I'm flirting with you and it's going really well. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good answer too. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Well, that's pretty good on time after that one. All right. You want to... Yeah, uh, <laughs> we did two games, but they're pretty bare bones, so... I know. I oh, think. yeah, yeah. It's, it's true. Uh, well, thanks for listening, everybody. You're going to find the show. Well, we're on iTunes. We are. So if you really like us, you go on iTunes, leave us a five-star five review if you want. 
Uh, we're on YouTube. Mm. Our, our Most of our backlog is on YouTube. All the old, old stuff is Thank on YouTube. Thank you, Executive Bruiser Janie. Hell yes. And you can go there. You can subscribe to our channel. That's great. A few people have. Yeah. <laughs> I've got some archived streams on there, too. Mm. If you're like, what's all this Tapog stream shit about that I never show up to on Sundays? <laughs> because it's Sunday. What are you thinking, Dave? I got, a, I got kids. I got to go to bed. Yeah. You can check them out on YouTube. Some of them. They're there. <laughs> and we're also on Spotify. We are. So we've been talking about trying to figure out how to put our backlog on there. Yeah. Uh, Because it's going to be messy. But all of our last 10 episodes, maybe not even that much, have been on there. Probably about 10. Yeah. About 10. Is there a review system on Spotify? Uh, I don't know. Follow us on Spotify. (laughs) Write Spotify a letter saying how much you like (laughs) us. We'd appreciate it. Mm. Dear Steven Spotify, (laughs) I enjoy your service. (laughs) But most of all, I enjoy Tadpog podcasts on so, your service. So please, more Tadpog and Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else do we got? That's a, we're on that, and uh, hey, we're on uh, Facebook. Tadpog mm-hmm. did a lot of good uh, memeage on there, mm-hmm. and some episode posts that aren't nearly as popular as the memeage, but that's mm-hmm. okay. That's all right. That's all right. We know we're not as funny as memes that we steal from other pages. Yeah, I mean, it's the fucking truth. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> fucking nailed it. Um, and then you want to like the secret club? Like, all right, well, let's get past the memeage to get some like some more about Tadpog or some rough memeage. Let's get to some some sexy memeage. Uh, that's Tadpog Nation. But then if you're a good boy, if you're a good boy talking about good things and you're on that Discord, there's also the Piggy Palace chat. So if you like uh, talking through the Piggy Palace that, that we're doing... Come come chat on there. Mm-hmm. Talk it up. I love that. Bit.ly slash Tadpog Discord. We'll get you an invite. And then, uh, hey, if you want a shirt or to contribute uh, to to Joseph and Melanie Drinkmaster's wedding, you can send that to... Uh, Dranksmiths. 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 <laughs> Smiths. Please. Snuff, Drinks. Snuffy Dranksmiths. Dranksniffs. <laughs> uh, shirts.tadpog.com. Mm-hmm. What else have we got? Uh, Tadpog underscore podcast on Twitter and Instagram. Mm-hmm. And then most importantly, there's that Patreon. Yep. Patreon.com slash Tadpog. Uh, there are a lot of cool people on there uh, who are helping us succeed uh, in lending us their support monetarily. So uh, I'd like to take a moment uh, and actually I'll let Tyler do it because we are. I usually read that from my phone and we are using that as a communication device via satellite for uh, Master Cycle Baron. To speak with us. Who we got, Tyler? All right. So, oh, damn. Damn, we need. We got to have to up Law Dennis's title because we had a, a huge bump from, from Law Dennis. John Mulaney Dennis. John- <laughs> <laughs> New title. <laughs> Lord, Lord Mulaney. Lord Mulaney Dennis. <laughs> And then uh, new new donor, brand new, and and bringing some heat, bringing 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 some heat, some fire. Just be you. Some come fire, on. come fire on. Fire fingers that that do not work with ice. Look, people don't tune in to hear Midwest Tyler. They tune mm. in to hear Southern Fried Tyler. Southern, yeah, <laughs> Castlevania eggs. I mean, come on. <laughs> so thank you, Norma Lester. Nor molester is that a, is that a pun? Something to get me to say molester? Molester? I don't know. You done I don't know. said it. But for that amount, that's fine. You can pay that amount. And I'll say molester, <laughs> molester, 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 molester. Or unless that's your real name, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this episode was executive produced by Usurper Grim, thirteen eighty three. You can find Grim on Twitch. Uh, he normally streams a whole bunch of like. Uh, recently, he's been streaming Rogue Legacy. Which is like, man, it. that's a game that you and I both fucking just. It's love. a top ten. It's the like, it is the most recent top ten game for me. I'm a big fan of that game, oh, and it's just so fucking good. Recently, I heard them say not so nice things about it on Retronauts, and it was like, come on, y'all, well, fuck you, Retronauts. Rogue, Rogue Legacy is fucking come amazing. on, y'all. Y'all are the John Mulaney's of retro gaming <laughs> podcast. Fucking <laughs> like Rogue Legacy. <laughs> Why don't you, man? Uh, and. We've also got this episode was also executive produced by God Emperor Alex Pena, cousin David Galino, Laud Mullaney Dennis, platinum member Brett Miller, the eightfold Daniel Abernathy, Master Cycle Baron Kevin Link, and Dig Dougie. 
So hell yeah, thank you guys. I can thank Link in person right here, almost in person via satellite. <laughs> <laughs> I can I thank said. Link's voice. Yes, thank you, Link. Hey. I just want to do a quick plug for you guys, too. If you're not giving at least a dollar for Patreon for these guys, come on. It's just a buck. And there's so much good content on there, especially the Piggy Palace stuff. Get into that shit because it's well worth it. Thanks, Thank dude. you. Thank you. Yeah, Tyler, you, you are running a very good game. You are playing a good game, Dave. I know I'm playing a good well, game. Well, your your game quality, your Jeez. your playing style Jeez, is good. Bragger, <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, you're running a good game. I oh, know. <laughs> you can say I'm the Java lady and run a call of Cthulhu. <laughs> so this guy, this Dave, is jealous of me. <laughs> hey, Link, what's our what's our theme song? It's Moves by Sycamore Drive. A link to that track can be found in the show notes at tadpog.com. Hell yes. How would you guys like to close it out? By determining the game that we talk about next week. Fuck. (laughs) (laughs) I've been sitting on on that for like 15 minutes. All right, I'm going to go over here. Man, I nearly got cursed bad. All right, I'm going to unlock. I was like, shit, he really does want to talk about Tank Girl and Barbed Wire. (laughs) Let me pull out this Louisville Slugger signed by one Donnie Jeffcoat. Place it on the ground, put my head on head on the on the butt of the of the bat, point my no no hole in random direction, say that prayer we all know so well. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Stop. Four forty two. Four forty two. Not yep. one we done before. Nope. This is all. This is official. This is official. We in the J's? We in the P's. P's. Yeah. Plock. I think it's super plock. Super plock. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sequel. Super plock fuck. <laughs> That's the dating sim. <laughs> you play as Jerry Boy, <laughs> and you got to date plock. <laughs> it's in the P's. I'll give you a hint. How about that? Um, Pitiful soccer. <laughs> no. Uh, I was thinking professional soccer. Bro, not professional. Do you remember the beard that you gave Gary Kitchen's super battle tank colon war in the Gulf? The beard? Yeah. The Geico caveman beard? Yes. Prehistoric man? Prehistoric man! Oh, fuck! <laughs> fuck! Man, our, man, the randomizer did not fuck us for doing a, doing a twofer. I- Hey, that's good. That's good. It's stuck, that, man. I, it was one of the few games that we were going to do that might get my brother back on the show. I knew you were going to be really excited as soon as I said, like, man, as soon as it came up, man. I was like, yep, there you go. All right. Fuck yeah. There you go. And meanwhile, everyone listening to this is like, prehistoric, man? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, you get McDonald's stuff. <laughs> it's really weird. It doesn't really mean a whole lot to me, but I know. Yeah, we'll get into it next week. Oh, man. Well, uh, how you guys want to close this out now? What do you think, Link? What we think Gary Kitchen sounds like? Yes, exactly. That's exactly what I was going for. All right. All right. So until next time. Tropical. Uh, in my Capricorn. expert opinion, Capricorn. Uh, Tropical Capricorn. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't sue us, Gary Kitchen. <laughs> There's somebody talking about my game. I don't care what you do. <laughs> I need Donkey Kong for the 2600. See you guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>Thanks for being on, Link. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, dude. Uh, I'm glad that it all worked out really well, considering that I didn't even play the game that I was supposed to. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> I figured, hey, that's a good thing that you can do a twofer on that one, because, yeah, they are pretty much the same damn game. Yeah, uh, yeah, we lucked out on that, like, <laughs> definitely, because I was telling <laughs> uh, Tyler, I was telling Link, I was like, yeah, it's kind of like... It's per- they're really similar, right? I'm trying to like bl- I'm like please say yes, please say these games are identical. <laughs> no, they're completely different, Dave. <laughs> you designed a kitchen inside a tank today, <laughs> dude. Gary Kitchen's Super Battle Tank. It does sound like a game where you're like in a huge like sand crawler tank and you're working in the galley. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs>